This one's for you, Rob. Hey guys, how's it going? back at it once again with a brand new video for you, and welcome to episode 10 something. Something in the teens. <laughs> I, can't, I can't keep track of these things. Of the online racer. F1 2012 gameplay while I talk about some actual F1 topics. Just the one race this time around. I wanted to keep this one short, but uh, I left the gameplay unedited just, just so I could pad the video out a little bit. But, um,. There was two topics I, I threw it out there for Twitter to vote on, and um, yeah, basically I chose the, um, the fans chose me to talk about Kimi Raikkonen, um, which is never a dull moment. Well, apart from his personality, of course. But uh, <laughs> but um, it's looking very very likely that later today, if not to you know, if not by the time you're watching this, it may already have been announced that Kimi Raikkonen will be a Ferrari driver for, t for the 2014 season, alongside. Probably Fernando Alonso. Uh, it's, it's not been confirmed who he's going to replace. Um, it's an interesting dynamic because there's, there's quite a few ways of looking at this. Um, f to me, it seems that Kimi Raikkonen is leaving Lotus because Lotus couldn't provide financial securities for him and his team, or you know, him and his agent and his management team and all that stuff. So by the looks of things, it seems to me like Lotus have got some money issues. They're still giving Raikkonen back payments for Grand Prix. And Raikkonen wanted assurances that he'd be getting paid regularly next year. And it looks like Lotus couldn't provide that. So the only other team out there that is looking for a driver is, right now, Lo um, Ferrari. Um, and Ferrari, are, I'm sure, are more than willing to kick Felipe Massa to the curb to bring in Kimi Raikkonen. Um, probably. Um, I'm a big fan of Felipe Massa. I always have been. One of the sports true nice guys, and he's been nothing but a servant to that Ferrari team. A you know a a, a model and ideal and incredibly classy uh, supporting driver. And we know what the Ferrari structure is. We all know it's a number one and a supporting driver. Yeah, that's been the majority of the case for the last 20, 25 years, probably since Schumacher was brought in um, to try and make Ferrari a better team in the mid-90s. It's been Schumacher and somebody else, whether it's been Eddie Irvine, Rubens Barrichello, Felipe Massa. When went, then when Raikkonen signed up, Schumacher left, so it was Raikkonen and Massa, but then, in a way, Raikkonen declined a little bit. <laughs> Felipe Massa became the lead guy. Um, for a year, then in 09 Massa had the accident, and then they had to shuffle around drivers until they got Fernando Alonso back in 2010 um, after his two years of a declining Renault team and obviously after Crashgate and all that palaver as well so now Fernando Alonso has been the lead guy for, this is what, his fourth season with Ferrari now, so you know He's been the lead guy, and Mass has had to play the, the Mass has had to play second fiddle. F the thing is, was that Ferrari has not, for the most part, had two title contenders within their team because it's not the Ferrari way. This is going to be probably a different dynamic. Kimi Raikkonen is not going to bend over for, for Fernando Alonso, not at all, not a chance that, that that's going to happen. So it's obvious that they're going to have to run some sort of equal driver system, similarly to what McLaren did in 2007 and in 2010. Because in 07, they brought in Alonso after two years at Renault to go with, you know, debuting rookie Lewis Hamilton. And I've always said it, I think Fernando Alonso's got a bit of an inferiority complex where he can't take it if somebody else is on the same level as him. And I don't think Alonso could take the fact that McLaren were leaning towards Lewis Hamilton because he was the golden boy. He was scouted from the age of 10 and, you know, it was always going to be McLaren's destiny that one day he'd eventually be in that car and that's exactly what happened. Alonso, being a two-time world champion, felt like he was left behind and I can understand why. But the general motif is that, for whatever reason, dream teams in this sport don't work. It, I mean, this is the first time since 2012 last year, really, that we're going to have two elite drivers in the same team because we had Jensen Button and Lewis Hamilton at one point. You know, McLaren in 2010 put together their own dream team of Lewis Hamilton and Jensen Button and it didn't really work out. I think the problem was is that their two drivers took too many points off each other and not to mention McLaren didn't have the most reliable car in 2012, which is a shame because it probably cost them the double. 
Uh, Hamilton would have, would have had a real shot at a title last year if it wasn't for his breaking down McLaren. And they ended up about 90 points behind Red Bull last year in the constructors. And, you know, they had they lost about 75, 80, 90 points from race winning or podium positions that year. Not all of them was mechanical. Nico Hülkenberg at Brazil, for example. But you, but you catch my drift. The problem is, I think, that, that, that there's two main problems, I think, of running a dream team. Number one... The problem is, is that drivers have egos for the most part. Big egos. All of them. Some bigger than others, but they all have big egos. And they may not be able to tolerate the idea of losing a battle to their own teammate. Fernando Alonso had that had that way of thinking. A lot of people seem to think Sebastian Vettel's like that too. Um, you know, and, and so on and so forth. Raikkonen doesn't really give a shit. So that doesn't really apply to him, I don't think. Raikkonen's not going to care what role the team put him in. Raikkonen will just go in the car, drive the nuts off it, and see what happens. That's always been Kimi Raikkonen's way of thinking. And number two, and it's, this one's more... This one's more technical. They tend to take points out of each other. You know, they'll be too busy battling amongst themselves for higher positions that as an overall team, they're compromised. But Ferrari definitely have got a real shot of the Constructors' Championship next year if they can get both of their drivers up near the top positions consistently. Because I think Kimi Raikkonen in, at Ferrari is going to be a better fit than Daniel Ricciardo at Red Bull, because Daniel Ricciardo's got a lot of question marks. Don't get me wrong, he's a talented kid, but this is a big step up, and they're now going to expect Daniel Ricciardo to challenge Sebastian Vettel. And, you know, nobody knows how fast he's going to be yet, so we've got to wait and see on that. But we know that Alonso and Raikkonen are two of the top four drivers in the world, and that's pretty much undisputed, um, according to what my commenters were saying on the top 10 pound-for-pound -pound driver video I put out yesterday, or not yesterday, sorry, a couple of weeks ago, a lot of the consensus seemed to have Alonso 1, 2, or 3, and Raikkonen 1, 2, or 3. So we kind of know what to expect from these two in terms of quality. So there's no reason to think or suggest that they won't be right near the top next season. And, you know, will that combination of two score enough points to be able to outscore whatever Vettel and Ricardo will do at Red Bull? You know, what about Lotus? Do Lotus go after someone like Nico Hülkenberg to fill in? Because I'm pretty sure he won't be kept when Siratokin comes in for Sauber. You know, there's a whole heap of different angles to play this from. Are Ferrari going to play the equal driver game and build a dream team? Or are they going to cut bait with Alonso after all the controversial statements and words he's come out with after this season? There's a whole lot of ways to look and break this down. So I'd love to hear what you guys have to say on this one. Um, what do you think of, of the Alonso Raikkonen situation? Raikkonen going to Ferrari, is it a good move for him? Is it a good move for the team? Who gets cut? There's a whole different ways to look at it. So I'd love to hear what you guys have to say as always. And I hope you enjoyed the video. This Singapore race was absolutely bonkers, especially that third lap if you caught that. <laughs> um, in the meantime, though, I've been Harrison101. Thank you very much for watching. That one's for you, Rob. Sayonara.